Let's talk about fixed overhead. This is the area of the software where you'll, where you'll enter in all of your expenses, really, that are fixed overhead. Now remember, the difference between fixed overhead and variable overhead, fixed overhead is not tied to productivity. In other words, it doesn't matter if one of your technicians is out on a job today or not, I still have to pay that expense, right? And if that's the case, it's fixed overhead. Now, the way that I always ask that question is, if I take John, one of my service techs, and I'm gonna have John clean the shop today, do I still have to pay that expense? And if the answer is yes, it's a fixed expense. If the answer is no, it was a variable expense. Right? For example, the utility bill. Now, the utility bill goes up and down as the weather changes outside, but if I have John come in and clean the shop today, do I still have to pay the utility bill? Yes, I do. It's a fixed expense. What about fuel in the trucks? If John is going to come in and clean the shop today, do I have to put more fuel in the trucks? Well, no, because John's not driving a truck today, so as a result, there's, that's, that's a variable expense. It's directly tied to him going out to the field to do a job. Now, I know some of you have your techs take the trucks home, and I still have a little bit of fuel there, right? Technically, that little piece of it to and from would be a fixed expense. Everything else they're using is a variable expense, all right? So we enter all the fixed expenses here under the fixed expense section. Variable overhead section would be covered in a different video. That'll be under the variable overhead section. So as we start looking at the general screen, you've got all the overheads that you've already entered are gonna show up here. Uh, we'll talk about some of these in a second. It, you know, how is that expense being spread? Is it monthly, is it quarterly, is it annual? We'll talk about those here in a bit. Uh, the cost per period, whether it's cost per month or cost per quarter or cost per year, uh, will show up. And then it's also giving you your annual amount. Uh, then also on the end, you've got your actions. We'll talk about the actions in just one second. Let's first go ahead and enter in a new expense. And so we're gonna do that by simply clicking on add fixed overhead. So when I click on that icon, the window is gonna open up to enable me to add another overhead expense. So let's walk through these from the top and just move our way down. Your tab key is a good thing. It will just simply bounce you from field to field. We're gonna start out with what is the expense itself. All right, so uh, in this particular case, we're gonna say this expense is, um, uh, again, we'll put in advertising. All right, um, so that's the expense that we have. As I hit tab, uh, what's the method to apply that cost? In other words, how often is this expense going to happen? So if, I, if it's an expense you're gonna pay every month, that would be monthly. If it happens once a quarter, quarterly, semi-annual is twice a year. Annual is gonna put the entire expense, means you're paying it once a year, and then manual simply allows you to simply come over here on the right and enter in when those expenses hit. Now, be careful here. The natural tendency for a lot of people is to say, well, I'm just gonna put annual and we'll put in the dollar amount for the entire year. Now, in the software tool, that automatically means that you're gonna pay that once a year and it will put the entire expense in whatever month you put it in. And at that point, it's gonna make all your cash flow projections out of line, right? So if it's a monthly expense, put it in as monthly. So I'm gonna say in this particular case, it is monthly. I'll go down to the next one. What month does this start in? So if it's monthly and it's all year long, well, then it's gonna start in January. Uh, let's say if you, if you put a quarterly and the first payment hits in February and then it's every, uh, every quarter after that, uh, you would choose February. In my case, I'm gonna leave it at January. Next one down, how much do I pay each month? All right, so in this case, let's say my advertising budget is $500 a month, just for nice, easy round numbers. Again, you'll see over here on the right-hand side, it's automatically showing you how it's applying that expense all the way throughout the year already. For example, if I said this expense starts in March, you would notice that at that point, it's still monthly, but it starts in March at $500 a month, it automatically zeroes out January and February and starts at $500 in, in March. So you can always see on the right-hand side how the software is going to apply that particular expense. I'm gonna change this one back to January. I pay it all year long. As I scroll down on this list, a couple of other items. The estimate category. What is the master category for this? And again, if you go ahead and apply this now, uh, will that, you know, in, in a future release be able to tell you what percentage of your total revenues are being spent on each of these master categories? So right now, uh, again, that is an advertising expense. 
Comments are purely for your information. You don't have to put anything there. It's whatever notes that you want to put in to remind yourself why you entered the data that you did. And then last is the allocation percentages. Now you've got one of two different uh, uh, scenarios. I can The default will be manual. Right, so the allocation method is manual and you can come in here and enter in what percentage of these advertising expenses are applied to uh, the, each individual department. Right, So uh, you're gonna put those in and it would happen manually. Some of the other options in here is uh, depending on the individual expense, you can say, okay, I wanna spread them based, uh, spread them based on where my people spend their time. Right, So I can choose all employees. And if I choose that, what you're gonna see is it automatically goes back, you've already told the software in a previous section uh, who your employees are and what percentage of the time they spend in each department. At that point, the software basically looks at your entire team and says, okay, based on what you entered in, in this scenario, 25% of this company's employees are in the service department, 44% are in the installation department, and 31% of your labor hours are in the replacement department. And so it automatically enters your percentages for you. Anytime I can use one of those drop downs other than manual, it will make your numbers far more accurate. For example, if I have an expense that says, um, eh, it's something that really only applies to the field labor. Let's say for example, all of my field guys wear uniforms, the office staff does not. Well, that might be an expense I would spread based on field labor. And so when I click on all field labor, it's gonna go out to my labor, look at just direct labor, and what percentage of my man hours are in each department. I can see now it's changed it to 26% service, 48% install, and 26% replacement. Right, so I've got those uh, in there. Some of the other items that are in there. Equipment. Is this where your trucks are spending their time? For example, fuel in your trucks, right? Or registration fees, for example, for your vehicles. All right, well, that's going to be based on the vehicles themselves. So if I choose equipment, it's going to go back, look at where you said your trucks are spending their time, right? And in my case, 43% of my trucks are in service, 35% are in install, 22% are in replacement. It's going to allocate the percentages that way. Uh, the other two areas that are in there, number one is sales. If you choose sales, uh, when you created your departments, you told the software roughly what were your sales in each department last year. And it's going to use those numbers to calculate what percentage of your sales are in each department. That would only be used for things like professional fees, legal fees, uh, maybe bank fees. That's about it. And then the last one is building square footage. Any expense that's building related, property tax, maintenance on your building, utilities, trash pickup, any of that stuff might be, it's going to be tied to the building. And so again, when you set up your departments, you told the software, how many square feet each individual department utilized in your buildings. As a result, those are the percentages that it will use in this particular case. And so again, choose the method that works the best, right? And once you have that method in place, you're gonna go ahead and click uh, on accept. That'll give you 100%. Again, the right-hand side automatically shows you how it's spreading that particular expense. And when you've got that done, you can click on the accept button down in the bottom right-hand corner and it will now add this expense to your list itself, right? So I've got that expense, that item right here that we just added to our particular company. One of the items I had said earlier is that when you see the three dots over on the far right-hand column under actions, anytime you see those three dots, that's an indication that you can do more with this expense. And so I'm gonna click on those three dots and I can see my three options. The first one is I've got edit. I can actually choose an edit uh, make changes to this particular expense that I entered in. Next one is delete. If I wanted to, I entered this incorrectly, I can delete this particular uh, fixed overhead expense. And the last one is copy it. I, and maybe if I have two expenses that are very similar, I can choose copy, uh, duplicate it, give it a new name, and make changes then to that particular department. There's, or that uh, particular expense rather. Now, there's one other item that I wanna point out in here. And that was when we were entering this expense, I realized that this expense, I entered it incorrectly. It should have been a variable expense, not a fixed expense. Easy way to solve that one. You just simply edit the software. It gives me all the values that are inside here again. And you notice up in the upper left here, we've got the icon that says change to a variable cost. All you need to do is to simply click on that icon 
What it will do is to say, okay, are you sure you wanna take this out of the fixed expense and change it to a, a, a variable expense? You simply click on yes, change it. It's gonna tell you you've got success. And at this point, we are now, right, I can accept that, and you will find that expense disappeared from my list. Now, if I go over and look at my variable head, uh, overhead expenses, you'll see that same expense here for advertising that we entered in, uh, and, and it now changes and puts that to a variable expense. So it, it just simply uh, uh, puts that, that dollar amount in there, changes it over to the other expense. There's different calculations uh, on that in terms of cash flow when you enter a fixed versus a variable expense. And so it just uh, enables you to move uh, an expense from one area to the, uh, the other very quickly without having to delete and re-enter it all over again. If you have any additional questions, feel free to contact us at grandiassociates.com or give our offices a call.